In this campsite before eight o'clock in the morning. Not unless you've got the keys to this. Up early this morning. Yep, it's just smiling. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to walk into Hotez to get the 815 bus to take a ride up to Fonte Du, where we're gonna get the cable car and then walk up the mountain quite a high elevation walk up to 8,000 feet but the views should be fantastic especially because it's going to be such a clear day here's the bus K49 poked to Ponte Du it looks like the driver's getting on. That was really good for you. 180. Oh, no, no. For a half an hour trip to Fonte Du. That's a return as well. No, it's just a single. The ticket's 17 euros return. 11 euros one way. It's 9 till 7pm. Picked up the start of the trek. It's going to get very high. Very barren. just see the path there cut into the side of the mountain that's where we're going 
Okay, Dos, Rogers. A couple of other routes there. This is the one that takes you high up. Snow in July, babe. So not every day you get the chance to walk on snow in Spain in July. Just about to break shade into the clear blue skies and sunshine. Here we go. Feel that heat straight away. Temperature feels like it's risen about five degrees already. Still only half 10 in the morning. Air feels really crisp and clean. No pollution up here. Really nice to breathe. Starting to feel the altitude now. Slowing down. It's steep now, that's why we're zigzagging up the side. Backwards and forwards, quite a drop down there. It's a, at least a 50 degree slope heading down. That's good to see. On the right track, don't want to get lost up here. So we're going that way. See the trail. Oh, we're nearly there, we're not. So just to give you an idea of scale, look how small Michelle is there compared to the route we're taking. Another sign, and we can see something there. Doesn't look like a refuge, looks like a lunar landing site. <laughs> but there is a refuge up here, definitely. Hoping for a coffee. Too early for a beer and gin and tonics. Puff's getting a bit more rugged now as we approach the top. Made a bit of a shelter there. It's not a big refuge, it's here. It is the lunar module. You we'll probably have to send it down from space to actually get it up here. So you can see we've got some books in here, some maps, plenty of beer, kettle, cooker. What's that? Is that three double beds? More beer. I think they're expecting a party up here. The portholes as well, fantastic. Each one with a million dollar view. Wow. 
Wow. That's a beer. Well worth it, isn't it? Oh, it tastes so much better at 8,000 feet. Cheers. The guy who runs this refuge, he stays here from May to October every year. Just literally lives here. And it's a really strange construction. You might wonder where it is, where it's from. It's actually an American warship which, which was being dismantled. And this was the gun tower from it. They brought it up here many years ago. What a view he has. He's just been out collecting snow to make the beers ice cold. I shall see you in about 360 degrees. What a wonderful 360 degrees that was. <laughs> There's a cable car that we caught up and we've walked all the way along here to the refuge. Gabriel uh, Veronica. So not much choices now but to kind of walk back down there. We might actually kind of follow this route around or we might go back to the cable car and back into Fontaine but really recommend the walk up here. The views, wow. We've completed the first part of the walk. Actually, that was going to be it for the day, but uh, it's only half 12. So rather than get the cable car back down, we're going to take the long routes walking back down. Just can't take the scaling of these mountains. Wow. And then you've got the view like this. And the view like that. <laughs> oh, lots of cows. How wonderful, we've got sheep, cows, horses, all roaming freely. We've got eagles in the sky. We've got Michelle. Me. <laughs> <laughs> sheep is. Well, there's, there's the dog. There's the dog looking after me, got a collar on. Probably no wolves in this area. So basically that dog is actually kind of guarding the sheep. They normally wear studded collars to stop the wolves from biting in their neck. And some food, hopefully. Spanish omelettes.
that was a very welcome stop, especially as we've actually forgotten half our lunch today. So, paid the price though, quite expensive. But what do you expect really, when it's uh, in a place like this? We've got to get the food up here. Espinama. That way. Where we came from, Fonte Dieu. One hour 45 back, but we're going to walk down into Espinama, which is 45 minutes, and get the bus back from there instead. I've been walking for the hip. Well, since half past nine, is it now? half past two, five hours. I stopped for only 20 minutes. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hi. The road down here has been quite a long trek. I think on reflection we might have been better off taking the longer route back to Fonte Du. But we're here now. I think the actual village is going to be nicer. There's going to be more here. But I'm uh, just a bit fed up with this road now. <laughs> we met some nice British people there, didn't we? We did. <laughs> Had a good old chat to them on the way down. And we're down. So now it's just a case of waiting for the bus. I think we've got about an hour to kill. We've had some lunch and a beer. Where's the bus stop? We'll find it. Well, we're back in Hotez. We didn't need the bus back because we met some lovely people on our walk. Jamie and Heather. And they gave us a lift back. Thank uh, you, Jamie and Heather. Thank you. Been to the supermarket. Filled up our rucksacks with our provisions and now we're going to walk back to the campsite back up that hill <laughs> and it's 26 degrees i think it said in the car didn't it when we came back with them 